Okay, we're back. Today we're going to do a little update on the Wraith. It's probably going to be more than one part. Um, I got some new stuff for the Wraith. As you know before, I've had this thing brushless. And she pretty well rips. But the problem is, is there's really nowhere to bash around where I'm at. So I don't get the fun out of it I could doing something else with it. So one of the things I'm going to do to it is I got these new RC four-wheel drive inner fenders. Let's see. And there's the, the part number for them. These were like $14. And what they're going to do is they're going to hide all this stuff inside here. And especially in the back where you can see all my wiring and everything. Also, I'm going to do a dual motor conversion. So I got a new ESC. I got the XL AE5 waterproof forward reverse drag brake. And this thing works off the little pins, which is nice. So you can do a 50% or 100% drag brake. Also got two 20 turn motors for this thing. I know that seems a little high, but when you got dual motors, you get so much more torque, you can run a little higher turn. And I got two 20 tooth spur gears to go on there. So hopefully all works out well. I'm still waiting for my motor mount to show up. But there's so much more to do. I figured I'd go ahead and get started because I do know after watching a few things on uh, YouTube that the I thought the second motor ended up facing out the back here but technically it comes out the front <coughs> which isn't going to be a problem I hope for my servo winch now I did have my battery tray going up front here before I'm not sure if that's going to work anymore. I might have to convert this back to being able to put a, a battery in the back. Or I might just mount the battery in there to where I don't have to worry about it anymore. Or even I might, uh, I got a couple other smaller batteries. I don't know where I got everything at the moment. I got a couple, here we go, a couple smaller batteries like these 1500s. And I might be able to put in here anyway with the motor in there and put two and just run them parallel so I'll have a 3000 milliamp instead of a 1500. But we'll see. So what I'm going to start doing is uh, taking some of this apart. There's a lot of things I'm going to have to get off to do this. I know I can just drop the motor down here. But I'm going to go ahead and pull these panels off. I'm not too happy with my camouflage it's kind of trashy so I might scuff this back up real good paint it back olive drab again and maybe give my hand that uh, airbrushing so we'll see I guess I moved my receiver back here to the back now and I kind of like it back there especially with the little antenna look it looks more like that's where an antenna should be for something like this than coming out the front or whatever so uh hopefully i can keep that like it is i can keep my power switch right here where it's easy to get to and the interior shouldn't have to change any but we'll see so i'm gonna start digging into this let me get a few things off and i'll be right back all right be back in a sec okay well we got the panels off the side as you see, we got our servo winch up front and our guy inside. We got to get him out. Not breaking anything. There, we get rid of him. I made the steering wheel swing that way so it was easy to get in and out. I did paint my seats, so they came out pretty nice. So that'll match the green. I'm going to try my hand at the airbrushing, like I was saying. So. This is my servo controller, my servo winch controller. Technically, it's just a winch controller. 
but I was having so many problems with the servo drifting. What I did was I opened it up, took out all the circuitry, put the motor back in, and then hooked it up to this. So now I no longer have a drift. And it was fairly cheap. It was like $12. That way you can make you a servo winch without worrying about that tensiometer or however the hell you pronounce it. Of trying to get it right because even once you get it right it seems like you turn it on and off a couple times and it's off again so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this brushless system out i got the uh power wires and everything around all the way to the back now so i'm going to have to i do believe i've designed that to where i can unplug it i don't remember but we'll see I'm just kind of showing you where I'm at. So let me get a few more things off and uh, I'll be right back. Okay. Got a few more things out. I got the, the ESC out and the power wire. I left this part of it. I'm probably going to change connectors underneath it where I can plug and unplug it. Disconnected the uh, ESC from the receiver. I left a lot of my cables still in there. I got a lot of jump through cables. And this little plate I made back here for my battery, I'm hoping I can still use all that. I guess the next thing to get out will be I'll drop this plate down and uh, get the motor out. Set this down. As you can tell where I had the wires extended, I just soldered them together so I cut them off. <coughs> the next time I'm going to use the same type of connectors as these here. I believe they're called bullet connectors. I'll hook them to here where I can splice it in. Be able to unplug and plug it fairly easy. And the next thing I'm going to do, like I was saying, is I'm going to take the bolts out of here, pull this up. Disconnect the transmission, pull the drive shafts, and uh, I'll probably do that now. Pull the drive shafts out. I have a feeling I'm probably going to have to beef these up once I uh, put these dual motors in. And these will probably become my weak point, and I'm going to have to also beef up the gears in the uh, in the transmission. But we'll cross that road when we come to it. We'll see. I've had some where everybody said I was going to blow them. And I haven't yet. And they can't believe how long I've had them going. So it's, I think it's just all in how you drive. charging batteries here at the same time. Right. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually just disconnecting the transmission while I got it sitting here and steady. It's a lot easier than trying to do it while it's flopping around since I know I got to take it all out anyway. Just do that. Give me just a second to find my screwdriver and I'll be right back. All right. I got my drill. I don't recommend doing this putting together, but I've never had a problem with it coming apart. So. Because you can strip them out when you're putting it together. They tend to get hot on the way in. 
I found on the way out there's not as it's going in, you know, so the heat's going away. Now, you can put these together with this. I would just recommend you, you stop early. Like start here, put them all the way in so far, and then let it cool down for a second, and then tighten the rest of the way up by hand. But Because uh, it is only plastic, and you'll strip it pretty quick. That'll save you a lot of cranking around. And there we go. One transmission and brushless motor. Now, like I said, if you're wondering why I'm getting rid of the brushless, the brushless was nice and fast. I really liked it. But there's no real place to uh, bash around here. Other than just driving back and forth straight in lines and going fast, which can be fun in some ways, but I mean, I got my my slash pretty much for that. All right, now I'm going to put a couple screws back in this thing. Just to kind of hold it together. Like I said, I'm not going to tighten them up. I don't really need it tight. I just need it to... Because I want to do the uh, inner fender wells. And of course, I need to have everything lined up to make sure I got them lined up. <clears throat> and four screws on the outer end ought to hold that well. Not tight, but it won't move around. <clears throat> All right, I think I'm getting lighter by the second. Now, like I said, I had a Castle 42, 4600 kV motor in there. This thing would scoot. But I'm going to do the double motor. So what I'll end up having is it'll have a 20 turn down here and then a 20 turn facing this way. I'm getting the level R3, a level RC. Uh, conversion kit and then I think eventually I'm going to go ahead and get this digs unit but that's to come we'll see how we're going here if it's taking a while to get stuff in I might go ahead and order it and then while I got the transmission out I can go ahead and uh, fix it all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and do some boring stuff. I'm going to take these tires off real quick. So give me a minute to get them off, and I'll be right back. All right. We got the wheels off. And as you can see, we're going to have to take the shock off right here. I do believe the back inner fender kind of wiggles around inside here. Kind of tucks around. And then the uh, shock screw helps hold it on there. So, uh... We're going to undo these fenders here, cut them out, as you can tell there's a, this looks like the front one, yep, that'll be a front. Might have to adjust it just a little bit. Or is that a back? Oh, that's a back one. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll take our razor knife and score around all these lines. And then hopefully we can snap it back and forth. Get some of this out the way. This here is the front one. Yep, you can see the tabs that you got to put through, and then they go through these body mounts. I 
It looks like the shock holes the other one. <coughs> I'm definitely going to cut these free first. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll paint them. Figure out what side the plastic on. Yeah, they got the plastic on this side. I think I'm actually going to paint mine from the side the plastic's on. So I got clear plastic back here that you'll see. Yeah, because if I paint the inside, then the paint's going to be right there where it can get all scratched up and everything. So I'm going to paint the back side once I have it all cut out. I'll peel everything off and just kind of mask it to where it doesn't get on both sides. Give me a second, I'm going to get me a nice brand new razor blade and score these out and I'll be right back. Alright, <clears throat> well I got one cut out and as you can see, once this thing is good and tucked in there and all the screws put back on that's supposed to go there and it's painted black that that's going to hide all kinds of stuff and it'll keep a lot of that mess from flying up on my electronics all right well let me get one of the front cut out and i'm gonna get my all out and um body reamer and do these holes real quick and uh then we'll get them prepped for paint maybe i can get them painted all right i'll be right back all right where's that side and there's that side. <clears throat> Looks like I'm going to have to do some pushing and pulling and things when I'm putting these covers on. But I believe I can make it work. It's going to be a little pesty. So i still got to paint these. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the other ones out. And then I'll, I'll get them painted. And hopefully... My motor thing will show up soon, and uh, we'll start that conversion. I just want to give you a look, so as long as we see one side there, I'll show you the finished product when I start the other, uh, when I get started on the dual motors. So that'll be it for now. So this is a uh, Wraith Rebuild Part 1. Until next time, please like, please subscribe, and please comment. Alright, bye.